Hey, everybody. What's up? Hi. <laughs> we have a special guest with us. Yes, my uh, brother's in town, uh, currently switching military bases. So, uh... He decided to come see uh, Black Panther with me. Woo! Jared, you were supposed to go see this with me, but then you decided, ah, eh, fuck Sean, I'll just watch it while I'm at work. Hey, I work at a movie theater, can you blame me? I don't know. If I worked at a nacho cheese concession stand, would you be angry at me if I didn't bring you nacho cheese for free? Well, I mean, do they let you take nacho cheese for free at this hypothetical concession stand? That's outside of the question. I mean that would be in the question because if you took also, it, they, authorized. they don't let me see. They wouldn't let me see this for free for another two weeks. Really? So you just watched it covertly on your break? Oh, you sneaky bastard! Like Robert Redford smuggling out <laughs> machine parts in his baseball uh, pants. I hope your boss doesn't watch this. Um, no, but I was actually it was my job to watch the movies the other night, so I actually just watched it in bits I and told pieces you. all night. I told you that shit. He was bitching about it in the car on the way to the movie. I was like, he probably had to run the, the little camera thing that night. I was the theater checker. I, go I told in. you, theater checker. I that go in and you... basically check the theaters, make sure people are... But we've had a lot of complaints during like, oh, people are talking. So we have to go in there and stay for long periods of time during this thing. And there's like four of us running around the building Ew. doing this thing. Plus, the other night, we had this motherfucker in 14 auditoriums. This is the busiest we've ever been. It was busier than Star Wars. Damn. Well, this, Disney, uh, that seems to be the case. Seems to have Disney made a shit ton of money off this movie. Dude, it um, beat Justice League in four days. Yes. To be fair, Justice League is a low bar to set. Yeah, let's, let's be honest. It's, it's an entire role. roles, but... It, it no, wasn't it beat great. the entire theatrical run, though. Yeah. In four days. Oh, four days. Damn. Yes. And wow. it it broke Deadpool's February record that Deadpool set, like, two or three years ago. Yes. Nice. It broke that. So they are balling, as it were. Yes, and they don't expect us to slow down for another, like, a week and a half. Honestly, after watching it, I can understand it. It was really Really good. Well, I looks like it. I'm gonna be in the minority in this. <laughs> yeah, right, you are. Uh, ass bitch. I I thought this movie was perfectly fine, but as far as movies go, it was another Marvel movie. Okay. Before we get would... into the back and forth on that, I want to ask. Okay. What was, uh, what would you have hoped for to? M change your opinion on that to where it is, okay, this was a good movie, fantastic, I enjoyed it. Maybe streamline the end fight a little more. Okay. Make it a little more personal, maybe. Um, without or too, maybe, more, too many spoilers at this juncture. Well, let, that's kind, of where, we, we that's kind that. of where we go. So overall, overall, I thought this was fine. If you like Marvel movies, you're going to get a nice movie out of this. If you don't, this one's not exactly going to do you any favors ingratiating you towards the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It stands fine as its own little movie. I very much disagree with that statement. This is the first movie where I was in a theater that normally people are talking and laughing and crap like that. The entire theater was silent. That like they, really they, they, they were all super pissed. No, no. Like, they were all... Like, silent until, like, a joke was cracked, and then you had, like, ten seconds of, like, ha, 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 and then it stopped. Did it wasn't over the top, like, robots? it wasn't over the top, like, when we were in Thor, where everyone was like, ha, ah, ha, that's the funniest fucking thing. No, it was just, it's so good, dude. I picture, picture, theater, like, I picture people in Thor laughing like they're in Thor. Ha ha ha! Thor make joke. Ha. Okay, that's exactly, that exactly how it, it. was. No, well, no, you saw a movie. You were in a theater filled with Disney corporate suits, sitting there going, "Ha ha 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 ha!" No, no. Joke yeah. calculated to be funny. Uh, Laughter finished. This uh, was. This is the biggest mixture of like culture we've had show up for a singular movie, besides Star Wars. That is, that now, is something I'm, I'm well, happy about. Let's explain how that's relevant, though. We're in the fucking Midwest. No, we're in the South. We're in the South, dude. The southern Midwest. Technically, Arkansas falls in both realms, but we're, whatever. The point is, is diversity is hard to come by here. Yes. Uh, I will say this is a very good thing. We have a 
movie with a legitimate African superhero. And a freaking awesome one at that. He's very, very cool. I've always liked Black Panther, though. So I've, I, always, I've always been of the opinion that he's a very cool character and could make his own movie. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy they've given him his own movie. I just really have to question, why did it take this long? I because understand. Wesley Snipes wanted to do Blade 3 instead of Black Panther because he had the opportunity. Well, let's be Wait, glad he serious? didn't. Yes. Let's For be real glad he didn't For real. do Black Panther because it would have turned he out. He got told he could make, make Blade Hold 3 up. or Black Panther. Hold up. I want to picture this though. Crazy ass Wesley Snipes because Blade 3 was when he was knucking futs, right? That was when he was sitting in yeah. his trailer getting high. Not talking to the director and would only communicate through post it notes. Tell me it would not be entertaining to have oh, that to compare It would be entertaining this. as fuck. <laughs> but it would not be a good movie. It doesn't have to be. It has to be bad enough to be enjoyable watching. Maybe, but if you do that, you run the risk of ending up like the David Hasselhoff Nick Fury movie. What? Or, yeah. or David the Hasselhoff second... as Nick Fury. Yes. Oh, God, I want to see that. Or the second uh, Ghost Rider. Or Ghost Rider oh. 2. Second Ghost Rider is in Nicolas Cage? Yes. Where he has the whole Jim Carrey-esque transformation sequence? No, that's in both. No. It's it's the Scar Jim Elba. Elba. Yeah, he was uh, the French guy. Was he French? No, Idris Elba is European. I, mean, I know Idris Elba is European. European. You know Idris Elba's more I, British. I'm no, going to be honest, I've seen parts of the French. second Ghost Rider, but we're getting off topic. Back yes. to Black Panther. Back to Black Panther. Uh, I never read any of the comic books. I grew up reading uh, you know, well, whatever he, comic books we had around our broke-ass house. He initially and, confronts, uh, I want to say it's the Fantastic Four. Uh, yes. In his first appearance, he confronts the Fantastic Four, Correct. and he essentially says, you are among the world's greatest. If, you, if I find you worthy then I will assist you. He only says this after they beat him, though. He's, and that's when he tells him, I am King T'Challa of the nation of Wakanda from Africa. I just want to clarify real quick. It took the Fantastic Four, all yes. four of them, to beat Black Panther. Yes. Okay. No, Black Panther's that's, an uh, awesome character. That's I, pretty freaking badass. I love, I love Black Panther, especially when he does a really good comic run. Uh, but Those of you comparing... Not the movie Fantastic Four. Read the comics. Don't get that shit mixed. This is well, finally the second. Did, this is the yeah. second Fantastic Four Human Torch that that Marvel picked yes. up, and it was uh, like, uh, hey, yeah, yeah. I hey, saw we're gonna, without we're gonna, spoilers, we're gonna, we're gonna rescue this baby bird. Well, well, yeah, baby bird. Come yeah. without without he spoilers. We treated Chris Jordan. Evans well. You're you're accepted here. Okay. He carried his role. He was so very hard good. in this, this. This is something I will 100 percent give this movie. Uh, I love the bad guy in this. He exists independently of the good guy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, he has his own motives and goals, and... He commits to them. I'll, I'll save most of this until we get into the spoilers portion, but I liked uh, Killmonger. Besides having a stupid name. Uh, he, he functioned as his own character, and again, existed independently of the superhero, which is something Marvel has a real problem with, mm. with their super villains, because usually they're a reactionary response, and they're like, I'm evil, you! It could be worse. He could be the Mandarin from Iron Man 3. Oh! Yeah, let's, let's not go there. He who but shall even not be then, it's, a, it's the whole, I'm evil Tony Stark! Isn't Tony Stark inherently kind of evil? Yeah, more or less, but... Yeah. He's got the whole crazy paranoia thing. We finally on. have the one Marvel character that's richer than Tony Stark. Up here, so yeah, but he's a uh, king of his own nation. So by yeah, he's default, a trillionaire, man. By default, yeah, he's richer than Tony Stark. <laughs> so that that kind of goes without saying. If Tony Stark were president of the United States, then he'd be on equal footing. Mm -hmm. Not anyway. Uh, uh, that being said, uh, if you're interested in this movie, I would recommend it. If you're not, just catch the Cliff Notes version. Can I do my tiebreaker thing now? Because you said no. He said yes. I didn't say no. Guest appearance tiebreaker. <laughs> I, I never <laughs> said no. Oh, yeah, fine. Go ahead. Go ahead with, your, with, your stupid, with your stupid thing. Go ahead. Can I get a drum roll, please? Uh... Yes! <laughs> it was an awesome movie. I love the visuals, I love the music, I love everybody they got in their freaking roles. It was 
awesome. And he's a bitch. I just want to add that one in. <laughs> oh, well. So if you don't want spoilers, there's recommendations. Uh, do with that what you will. So everybody reference spoilers? Yep. Spoilers in three, two, one. Dude. And he kills Dumbledore. Oh, wait, I'm late for that one. <laughs> yeah, that's the best shit. Uh, dude, I love how he mentioned the soundtrack because I love the shit out of how every time Killmonger appears on screen, it just switches to like this thug ass that was the most, rap. That was a cool like low key feature in the film. <laughs> it wasn't was. It? it gave and a then, nice. It gave a nice distinction. I was kind of reminded of uh, Luke Cage. Yeah. How uh, well, the Luke show? Cage? Yeah, how Luke Cage would not swear, and the bad guys would swear profusely. Yeah, uh, and it created a, a nice cool subtle. Uh, connection between the characters so so i i really prefer the the musical versions of this the music of this was actually really really good i i told ethan this when we were walking out uh most of the marvel well, most comic book movies in general actually have this very generic soundtrack to them nowadays mostly mm. except guardian guardians had a very <laughs> eclectic I'm, I'm talking about just the music meant for made for the movie yeah but most of them have this really generic uh Super sound that yeah. you could basically interchange with any other movie. Are, uh, are we counting Iron Man 1 among that? Because they didn't make their own music for a lot of it, but there were parts that did. I, I would and say I after Iron Man 1. Because even like my favorite of these, which is Captain America, the first Avenger, uh, has a one. very generic music to it. But this had uh, a nice blending of... Uh, tribal musics with the orchestrals and the strings, mm. and I thought it blended really, really well. So I will definitely give the movie that. Uh, what about I the costumes? I don't know. Costumes were pretty darn good, actually. I like the fusion of uh, new, modern, and advanced uh, uh, layerings and wear mm. combined with the more traditional uh, uh, African aesthetics. It was pretty slick. It, it was very interesting looking. I love how they, because they were super heavy influenced by some of like the stuff that you would uh, just like growing up, because we read National Geographic and things, like we get yeah. to see things from over in Africa, Europe, and all that other places, mm -hmm. and it was really cool to see how heavily influenced that they worked with those things. Yes, Dude, I, they, I thought they, the I thought characters they did a really good were job. wicked unique the when it comes to the character. Was they were very unique, passionate. They were unique looking. Yeah. I could not tell you almost anything about them. Which is something That's that... That's not unusual for side characters in a Marvel film. No, which I, I think is a big problem with Marvel movies, is basically all you're going to remember about them are the good guy and the bad guy. And everybody else is just people there. That's not completely true. I love the shit out of the sister. She was like, good, but can yeah. you tell me her name? Leave something like something like that. I'm gonna be honest. I was super fixated on everything going with that film, and I already knew. Well, that, that's the, that's name. the problem, though. He, all I you, know that the all you remember the general's name the is guy the Suri, guy. I believe. I don't think so. No, no, well, don't look it up. Don't look it up. I feel like for the sake of no further conversation, you just, you just walked out of this movie at the exact same time I did. Yes. Tell me what are the characters' name besides. Killmonger, and T'Challa. The General, sorry. Can you make sure, can you be certain sorry. that's his name? There was name. Bucky Barnes. Okay, that's cheating. <laughs> that's cheating. Um, but that, no, that's sure. kind of the problem, though. You're, I feel bad about that, though. Because that's the problem, though. There's were no, a big part of the movie. Like, they, the sister, they're there, the general, but there's no characterization and, to them. Are you kidding? Alright, so... I don't know anything about them other than what they do. Part of that, I think, could be because the approach that the director had taken, I thought, to a lot of the characters was read them through their actions, and you as a person with your ability to read into people, get from them in that manner. In the sense that the general was super loyal to her kingdom, and that's why she was bound to serve Killmonger to a degree. Yes. And not necessarily the rebellious nature of his love interest in this film, uh, but her desire to do what's right, regardless of what tradition is, is what drove her to take the queen and the sister and leave the city and the nation of Wakanda and eventually find uh, T'Challa and heal him. You know, with the you're talking about the spy character. 
Yes, the girlfriend. I'm thinking, I thought of um, Martin Freeman's character when you said that, but yes. Okay. The, yeah, it was See, again, you can't even tell time. me Martin Freeman's character. He played a very small, Wrong. significant role. He's really, he's, he's just, been in three of these. But he's been a side character in all but one, and that was the uh, Civil War. In this one, he's literally just there as a passive character up until they need him to pilot the thing. He's kind of like, he's just this dude thrown in for the sake of the situation. But again... Oh, I'm thinking of the wrong character. Never mind. What? Who is he? What, is, what does he do? What is he? I know he's a CIA agent. He was in the Civil War thing. He handled Bucky Barnes. And Outside of the movie. Outside of the movie. What do you know him. about him? Exactly. That's kind of the problem. There's no deep characterization to these characters that you're supposed to be invested in that you just know are going to be there at the end. I don't know that it's fair to say that you're supposed to be invested in those characters. Because you should be invested in any character they bother giving a name to. To an extent. This is the Black Panther movie. so the I'm not talking around. about just Black Panther. This is like a symptom across all Marvel movies. Yes. DC movies as well. That's because they are meant to feature your main hero and the characters that are associated but with But should that be exclusive, though? Because outside of them, and even up to the superheroes, I'm never worried about them. Hmm. Never in the middle of the movie do I think, well, Captain America could die. Like, there comes a point in this movie, uh, Killmonger throws T'Challa off a cliff, and I was just like, well, uh, I guess we're just going to have to sit here without T'Challa for a bit. See, but they could have completely done that, because there's a big point in the comics where uh, either T'Challa was dead or, like, Massively injured, and his sister became Black Panther. Wait, really? Yes. Yeah, the girl, Holy the, the inventor chick, she became Black Panther for a at least a good six years. But gotta, again, like roughly this, we we've, we've long since established a divergent between the comic books and the movies. So conflating those two, you might as well just forget them. They're telling their own stories. They may pull bits and pieces out of the comics to help fulfill the story along. But they're basically divorced entirely at this point. So, I can understand the lack of concern because it's like, okay, this is the main person in the movie, they're not going to die, okay, let's see where this goes. But at the same time, I think you miss out on the, okay, how is this going to work out? I know exactly how it's going to work out. T'Challa's going to come back and there's going to be this giant end battle sequence where CGI video game people hit other CGI video game people. I never feel any tension in these fights. Mm -hmm. The closest I ever got was at the end of Civil War 3 because that, or Civil War, because that came down to an actual confliction of ideals. Because that was actually hey. going to cause a bit of a rift. With uh, Tony and uh, Steve, and I'm like, and even by the end of that, it's just like, oh, I guess they're sort of still friends. I oh, don't well. know that it's fair to say this one didn't come down to a conflict of ideals. It came it down to a conflict of ideals. A, uh, it was a, like, smash but there were, fight. But there were no, there's not going to be any lasting repercussions out of it. You what kidding? That? He changed his stance on outreach programs, uh, like Pardon reaching me. out from Wakanda by the end of the film. Okay, let almost me, as a result let me, of let me, re, of let me rephrase that. Then. There's not going to be any lasting repercussions for the character. In what way? In that he was already going to be moving for opening the nation up a little bit. He wasn't though. At the beginning of the film, when he's talking with his love interest, his ex. He had no interest in those things. And Which is kind understand. of weird because he kind of said he would be interested in working with the outside world again in the end of Civil War. If you'll remember. I don't remember He that. wasn't, I he wasn't I willing, willing to reveal like all their secrets, though. And at that mid credit scene, you know that very well he's about to go, well, I happen to be sitting on a fucking mountain of vibranium. Right, that, yeah. Right. Like... I really think that, it, that this would be a fun argument. Killmonger is the low-key hero of the film because he no, changed I'm, I'm his behind that, talk, actually. Uh, stance on the whole thing. I'm behind that. I, I, not, not particularly. Major, I do like Killmonger in this, though. Major spoiler alert, I don't think he's dead. Killmonger? Yeah, I don't think he's dead. I don't care. How do you figure? 
Uh, well, with the the plant thing, I immediately I don't see him dying. Completely. Well, the plants are gone. He still had the plant in him though. The he plants, still had the power and everything. The the plants effects don't wear off unless they drink that other shit to wear the plants effects off. Mm, maybe I don't know. That that would Plus be a, only like that would be a huge cop out though because his character already went through his bit of an arc and uh, fulfilled. His character does kind... a lot more in the comics though. Yes, but that he could actually be... also replaces T'Challa temporarily as Black Panther. Really? Yes. Well, that was like very said brief, about but... uh, virtually any comic book bad guy we've come across so far. I mean, I look mean, at the Red Skull. And they killed him off in America. Different in, approach in Captain America, America One. Wait, there, what? There's no way Red Skull's dead. If he is not at this point, I'll eat my hat, dude. The Tesseract was the thing that fucking jumps people a universe to universe. No, he's on a different universe completely. Yeah, actually, he's got a point there. I, I Let's get that. We're getting off stuff. I don't care. Um, uh, no, I liked Killmonger in this. Uh, he had ideals and motives that exist outside of the hero. So he he's not wrong uh, in what he's trying to do. Yeah, I mean, like they said, he was radicalized uh, as a result of it. Yes, he took it to an extreme and his motives were selfish, but... But he's 100% right. I was about to say, if uh, you knew, like, your uncle killed your dad and just kind of, like, no, left I was just you talking there about his and, like, fucked off. No, I to uh, introduce technology and crap from Wakanda into the world well, because yeah. he'd been sitting there basically hoarding all of these things that could have helped change the world. Uh, he wanted to do it more for a force of maliciousness than for a force of good, which is what T'Challa ends up doing. But he's not wrong. So... That's Talking also where you get to, like, the the best friend who was kind of like, well, you know, it, this guy and his dad both failed to get somebody that killed my parent. Here comes his cousin that did it in, like, ten seconds. I think I'm going to follow him. His well, that was, that was kind of where uh, the movie got really interesting for me, because uh, it... Uh, Marvel often tries to parallel real-world events in their comics and sometimes their movies. And in this one, they very much took on the idea of isolationism, uh, nationalism, radicalization, uh, colonialism, and it touches on all these things. It just never quite forms into a cohesive uh, gel for it all in giving a stance. Uh, How do you mean? Well, I mean, uh, like at the beginning when uh, Killmonger is looking at the uh, axe... Or the pickaxe that's made of vibranium. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I don't know. Did you actually uh, get, uh, did you actually find this or did, was it taken like so many other things that your ancestors took from my people? Mm. And it, it kind of touches on that a little bit. Uh, it touches on the uh, idea of a closed border system and not allowing. Uh, uh, let's let's just go ahead and be bluntly honest. Not allowing immigrants. Uh, whether or not there should be some kind of a wall around uh, a certain border. <laughs> I don't remember anything that they they discuss. They discuss really would follow into the, at least something so specific as the wall. Now, immigrant crisis and I mean out there was aid, a yes, there but, was a wall. Yeah, like a, a wall that they had yeah, to fly wall. into. Yeah. To the... Which such a freaking cool effect. Yeah, it was all right. Like I know it's been done before technically, but I enjoyed it. I it thought was... it was pretty cool. I mean, at least at the it. end, I didn't get CGI monster fighting another CGI monster. No, you like just justice. Had, you did be... get gi uh, rhinoceros. You did rhinoceros. get giant CG rhinoceros. Oh, the shit out of that giant CGI rhinoceros. What is the point? <laughs> no, no. My favorite thing about the final fight was that okay. giant ass motherfucker that comes in from the banished tribe up in the mountains and yes. starts knocking fools around. I was 100% okay with that. That dude was that show, awesome. That you showed like, character development. You mean and, White Gorilla? Yes. That's his that comic showed, name is White Gorilla. Really? That showed character okay, development. Cool. I know he's uh, actually a like, couple of characters. Turn, yeah. He's a badass. Yeah, him yeah. and T'Challa. Like, uh, they had a lot of main Black Panther villains show up because... Uh, the guy with the sonic hand, uh, Claw. Claw. He's big, big villain for. Yeah, Black he was a I'm Russian. Glad that they super villain, wasn't he? 
He was the one who, if I correctly remember, in the books killed T'Chaka. Maybe? I don't know. Damn. Uh, I think he killed him in the, in the movies, too, because he's the one who set the bomb. In Ultimate Avengers? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. Except he was a space alien shapeshifter weird thing in that. What? In the comics, he's made out of sound. So. Well, that's... in the comics, he also wears a reddish pink suit and has a uh, radar dish for a hand. Yeah, it's his sound <laughs> powers. Oh, no. I have the power to make your smooth jazz turn into fluid jazz. Yeah! One of those like a... sound vibration things that melt insides and bullshit like that. Look out, woman! I'm going to vibrate your insides! Yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> Where did you go with this? I don't know. <laughs> I, I went to a certain place you and I don't know. Help. You need help. You need... Yeah, well. Mm -hmm. We've been saying that for a while. Anyway... I no, the end fight, I would have preferred it be much more low-key. Leave the rhinos out, because that just looked awful. I thought uh, it was... I never, I never felt any tension for our heroes. Uh, if you're going to have a big final fight scene, then make it between the characters. I was concerned about the guy uh, flying the plane. Yeah. Because I was like, this guy is kind of expendable. This, they this could completely kill the white guy. They pull him out, it's like, oh, shield's at 50%. It's like... He's gonna stay and he's gonna die. That's that's awesome, but that's sad. Damn it! And then, like last minute, he gets out of there. I'm like, yes. Really? You would expect? I really was concerned. If he, if he were a no, if he were a no name actor, then yeah, I would probably be more concerned. But no. since it's Martin Freeman, you have to shell out money for Martin Freeman nowadays. Yeah, that doesn't mean you can't kill that him off. You shell out money problem. for Sean Bean to... when he dies in every film he's in. And I think that's like in his contract. It must be. But no, I no the... no not every film because. He does not die in, uh, oh, fuck, uh, Jupiter Sending, he doesn't die in that. Doesn't he? Uh, or is he already dead inside? Don't, well, that's not, <laughs> that's not been a question for a while. Uh, we are super straying off topic here. Yeah, uh, the, I'll bring it back with something. Uh, Death Race 2. Okay, cool. Yeah, he doesn't die in so, Death Race 2. Bring it back but, on, on topic. Yeah, I, no, was I was never concerned Super for concerned for anybody. the sister in the final fight. Really? Killmonger was like, fuck that bitch up. Mm -hmm. And he was gunning for her for a minute. I really thought he was going to get in there and like, actually manage to kill her or hurt her. No, or she was the smartest character. I was character super concerned. Like, no, um, all of them. So. I enjoyed her character. She was cool. And those freaking, like, the hand blaster pieces? Yeah. Really cool. The props in this were actually pretty neat. They were I'll, I'll give them that. Awesome. I love, like, I'll... everything with the costume design was fantastic. For the most part, yeah. The uh, director had a passion. Like, uh, the theater showed, well, like, a one-screen uh, screening of it that actually had, like, a ten-minute feature after the movie. Mm -hmm. And it was just an interview with the director. And they incorporated so much stuff into all this. The guy, like, had a passion for this movie and this character. That by itself is really helpful it the film. It shows. Yes. Like, there was a lot of love put into it. Yeah, it's like his favorite comic character of all time. Well, that's good. And, good. like, he was in film school when the first Iron Man came out, and he's like, I want to be a part of this, but I want to make Black Panther. And that's exactly what he did. Well, so, it just goes to show you, dreams, dreams, come true. dreams can come true, and anybody can make a movie that is super formulaic and designed to sell action figures. You are just you are so like inside. lost and dead inside sometimes. I'm I'm sorry. I just no no. I, no. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry happy. for whoever am... it was that broke your little child heart. That now every every movie you watch, it's called first Hollywood. Thing, no, no, hold up, every movie that you have ever watched with me since you had to be like twenty something. I don't know. You have had the first Maybe thing out that, of I, your I mouth you. is something that like brings it down or like it's just kind of like meh or you negative you do or that with a lot he's right man like I appreciate that you want to be critical about stuff but man you gotta leave with something good before when you start everybody on the down. face of the fucking planet is saying this is the best movie ever it's gonna change everything nothing will be the same ever again <laughs> we have two people sleeping <laughs> right now that Sorry. have to go to work not for long but, but that's right uh I'm sorry, this movie, it's fun, it's fine. 
It's not super special. But I, well, you know what? You set it apart very... from me. What? I've been watching Black Lightning, and thank God this movie didn't do it, because Black Lightning has been doing the shit out of it. There are no generic white racist characters in this thing. Yes. Not a that, fucking one. That would have been very, very easy to do, Because, like, Black I Lightning mean, straight yeah, the last the well, new TV show, is yes. that right? Black the Lightning last episode predominant... I watched had a generic white redneck that said, You're wanted by the cops, I'm gonna blow your black ass away! Oh, God, no. I'm like, why are you doing this? <laughs> to be fair, it would have been it would have been very easy to have that, and it would have been really really shitty if like, they did in this movie. I love how Black, the sister Black was like, most... "Oh great, another broke white boy in the face." I love the shit out of that. I right. thought it was hilarious. I gotta interject real quick, okay? Hmm. So, um, the guy who played Claw, yes, Andy Circus, Andy Circus, hmm. Martin Freeman, who played, um, uh. CIA American guy, which, by the way, amazing job on hiding the accent. Both of them were in another movie series. And I'm, I, I'm doing this. You've heard the joke, but I'm doing this. Both of them were in another movie series. You know which one that was? No. Lord of the Rings. Andy Serkis played uh, oh, Gollum. Gollum. And uh, Martin Freeman played uh, Bilbo Baggins. Very good. So that makes them the Tolkien white guys. <laughs> 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 Welcome, Internet. Very good, very good. I was dropping my head a lot as a child. I apologize for nothing. Yeah. I'm sorry, I was no, not I, going to leave tonight without doing that joke. I just think joke. it's really weird, like, how uh, this is, like, the rallying cry that uh, black directors and black actors can lead movies and uh, will change uh, Moonlight, Get Out, 12 Years a Slave, which... I think are infinitely better movies and it's like they've already come out before and essentially did what you were saying this movie is doing don't get me wrong in saying that I think that Black Panther shouldn't be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as his own standalone I, I do not Agent Ross. but you had to look it up hey, you had to look it up, up. Uh, we gotta pay proper respects to the different roles here uh, the three, two leading ladies. Well, three leading ladies. Uh, but Ayo, A Y O. Ayo. Uh, 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 Okoye. Okoye and Nakia. It would all be the same. Okay, cool. Okay, that's so hard for me. Ayo, Okoye, and Nakia. And just yep. Really cool rows. Yes, they were fine, but again. You had to go and look them up. They're not memorable. Honestly, Names are really hard to remember, names. man. I am good with faces. I'm terrible with names. Yeah, you're right. I keep forgetting your name almost every other time I see you. Who is this again? I think it's Bill. Uh, Bill, nice to meet you. Anyway, uh, I, just, I just think that it's... I think it's wonderful that we finally have a superhero movie... Uh, a, where the character does not come from a uh, bad lifestyle, i.e. he was in jail, or he was a thug, or something like that, yeah. and he has to redeem himself. He starts out as a good man, he ends as a good man. Yeah, it's a, it's I a like dignified start-to-finish superhero. Exactly. I like that we now Honestly, have a, a black superhero who has that kind of so backstory to him. That aspect for like the, the Black Panther in this... Right is the same thing that I really loved about Luke Cage's character in the Netflix original. Well, Luke Cage was the flip side of that, because Luke Cage did come from a bad, 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 He came from a bad backstory. Try saying that five times fast. Was he actually? He didn't. Because he, he was undercover he was, in there, wasn't he, or something? No, he was uh, set up and sent to prison. There we he go. He didn't do it. So, ha. He didn't do the crime he was committed Mike drop. of, and then he finally, they dropped all the charges in Defenders. I didn't see Defenders, so... I'm still working on it. I'm ashamed to say I haven't finished them, but I haven't finished Daredevil either, or Jessica Jones. I mean, Season Jessica 2 Daredevil Jones. is... Eh. Like I said, I haven't finished them. Either but, way, I enjoyed Luke Cage for the same reason I, I really like well, the character of T'Challa. He also they is not... Have Pride and dignity in all the right ways. They are yes. fantastic as yes. characters. Uh, with Luke Cage, there's very much a more street element. Uh, it appeals to the urban environment yeah. character. Versus T'Challa, which uh, speaks to... A king uh, is a king, having, whether in satin or sackcloth. Yes, he, he represents heritage and tradition. Mm. 
more than he does uh, essentially be, Yo, what up? I'm from the street. As so many other remember that was ever Killmonger doing that. doing that was what Killmonger was supposed to represent. He's Killmonger like, hey, was supposed auntie. to represent the dark reflection of what T'Challa could have become, yep. had he allowed his anger to rule him, essentially, or had he been in a different uh, spot. I can see that. That so, part I get. Like I, he is a just I'm, position of T'Challa. Yes. Again, I'm not saying any of this is a bad thing. I just think that if you're going to use a rallying cry for as a, a movie as a rallying cry, there are think far that's better what movies. It was meant to be. It's not what it's but meant it to just... be, but it's what people are putting it up on a pedestal to be. But here's now you have to temper that a little bit because news media marketing, very importantly. Well, that's what I'm to sensationalize things. But that doesn't mean that it's not held up and it's like this is freaking awesome. We have a superhero movie out here that is just spot on with how they're putting their production together, the characters are good, and whether or not objectively or technically speaking you think, you know, it falls in line with the other Marvel stuff. I mean, it's really not Coming out of all the Marvel stuff, though, this was so much better than anything we've had recently. It was better than Guardians 2. It was better than Ant-Man. It was better than Thor. One and two. Yeah, it was better than both well, again, swords. That it was, was better exactly than hard bars to cross. Maybe not, but it's still it's above them. The I will say I like this movie more than I like Doctor Strange. Really? Yes. That's surprising. I know you were like a Doctor super Strange, fan of it. But visually, you did Doctor enjoy Strange it. is good. Is really really good. Story wise, it kind of sucks. The last good, like the last Marvel movie, I think I liked as much as I like this one would have either been Civil War. Or you can kind of put Spider-Man Homecoming in there, but that one's a different thing because that's like I'm, half Sony. I'm and... putting this at Civil War levels of good. It, it it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. I'll put it further back from that. I'll say um, I liked it better, or as much at least, as when I saw the first Avenger for the first time. It was just, it was a f- awesome movie. I felt good at the end of it. I enjoyed the ride. I enjoyed the characters they're in. Even if I'm really bad at names and stuff, each one was very distinct to a degree. Even just by the way that they use the characters and how they develop through the story. Even if it's like there's not a lot of stuff that changes with certain characters, they're still distinct. You, they have very unique looks. They have very unique ways that they behave and rules that they adhere to. Even if it's not explicitly said. Uh, and it wasn't even it wasn't an origin story, which thank God. Yeah, yeah. Marvels kind of seem to like. Just starting to go uh, away from that finally. They didn't yeah. overdo the callbacks to the Civil War sequence. It yeah. was like two or three little cutscenes yes. to remind you, like, oh, hey, this is what happened. And then that was it. Everything else was moving forward from there. Yes. Which I know is a big thing for you. And I don't know, you kind of have an issue with stuff like that sometimes. Yeah. But like uh, when it they, they doesn't bother it. you quite as much. They, they do. It just depends on how, if it's necessary or not. And yeah. This one, I just, I liked it a lot more because it was the first, something that felt, Sean's like, yes, it's a generic sequence, and they went, but it just felt like something different for the first time in a long time. How? How is it? The, the I'm assuming you were talking about the ending so, uh, sequence. Um, I the think I five. know what it might be, and you might appreciate this analogy. What's that? So, um... Partway through the fight, they get tossed into the chasm, yes. land on the ram track, right? Yeah. Sound wave and train comes through, boom, they have to stop fighting. And they take a moment to converse. And I kind of got a weird, sort of a Star Wars vibe from it, um, to a degree, when um, Vader and Luke had tried to kind of talk a little bit during their fight and before. It was like, I don't know, it was like they were trying, there was still that attempt like, to try and communicate to the other side of it while the wall was up. And then when it came down, they went back at it. And in the end, it's like he had to kill him. In a, Even in a Alfred, he's like, I can still save you. I think I can save yeah. it. It's like, like there was, no, it wasn't, it was a lot of fighting and smashing and then the un, 
the callback, but not necessarily necessary giant war rhinoceros that came through, but there's that small little element where it's like, connect with me, please, as a person. And then he takes them to see the sunrise. Yeah. Yeah. That was a really cool finisher to it. Yeah. I, and the last again, line for Killmonger like, before he died. I like this about Black Panther. Cool he tries to he tries to talk it out uh, with his adversaries. Yeah. And so I don't have a problem with that. That line though, when Killmonger dies. Yes. No. It was that it was, was very a good. badass line. Like it was sad, but it's like that he commits to this. Yes. idea and this belief like to the end yes and it makes him more empathetic as a character yes no i'll i'll agree there i again i like killmonger he was a good bad guy he was a really good bad guy it also it kind of showed t'challa changing a little bit because t'challa like had to have somebody stop him from like killing claw right then and there in public yeah, yeah. and this time he was like i can save you let me in he was like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm kind of sad they killed Off Claw in this one. I understand, I you know, it kind of played into I don't the think, I this, think but one I, of I was the actually two okay with this one. one. I, yeah. it, it furthers the story beyond just bad guy's dead, movie mm -hmm. over. So, actually having his death be a plot point in the movie to further the story and a character, I thought actually worked very well. So, I'm not super angry that they killed off a character. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for Bucky's vibranium arm now. Because you know that's going to happen. Holy shit. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> right. They remake the uh, Winter Soldier's arm out of vibranium, oh. don't they? That's going to be cool. Oh my god, with this. What? I like Bucky Barnes as a character. He's tragic. He's also like metal emo, literally. <laughs> when he came up, on the, came up on the screen, I was just like, okay, well... That also, just to remind you, Bucky's in the movies, I guess. That also threw it back to a... Uh, there are so many Easter eggs in this thing that, like, the White Wolf is actually a completely different uh, character altogether, but he's like a Wakandan assassin. Wait, what? Really? Yeah, there, there's a character called the White Wolf. That's awesome. Just pair a color with a creature and assume that there's a Marvel character based off of it. I mean, that sounds reasonable, but even still, like, learning that Yellow there actually Lobster, is one. I'm sure, is a character. So you gotta think, for me, I grew up, I always had the biggest, like, comic book like, love crush, for some reason, with the Moon Knight character. Like, white Batman guy? Basically, well, white Batman guy with multiple personality disorder, which I didn't know at the time. I thought it was like, okay, that's a freaking cool outfit. What's he do? Oh, he does the same stuff with Batman. This guy's awesome. He's different from Batman because he's wearing white and he's, you know, Moon Knight. He's also Jewish. Cool. I don't care. Is that supposed to change my opinion? powers came from uh, Egypt. Huh? His powers are from Egypt. Weren't they? I yeah. thought he was just nucking futs. Uh, well, like I, said, a, I grew up and I just didn't learn yes. anything about the comic book character because we were broke and we only got like Archie comics and the occasional Sonic the Hedgehog issue. You must love Riverdale then. I absolutely love Riverdale. <laughs> and, wait, no, the show? Yeah. Yeah, no, I hate that shit. <laughs> I am uh. not, so I put Riverdale in the same category as I put Fast and the Furious. Prepare to hate me. I will not watch Fast and the Furious. I will not watch Riverdale. You might change your tune on Fast and the Furious past the fourth movie. That's when they shift gears and they become high-speed uh, heist movies. Here's the trick. I have to watch the first four. No, no you don't. don't. No, no, I have to watch the first four before I would start watching the fourth one. No, you, you honestly no, no. do not. I will they not have watch absolutely, in the middle of the series. They have little to no bearing whatsoever. <sighs> they, they completely and totally shift gears. <sighs> I'm probably going to end up watching that stupid shit. They, they actually become a lot of fun. Five becomes basically turns the whole series into a heist, a heist movies. I thought yeah. they were heist movies from the. I don't even care. Back no, like Panther. international high stakes, uh, James Bond style, so, old school James Bond style. Ocean's heist. muscles. Yeah, pretty much. Ocean's Eleven with muscle cars. I almost wish that they would rename it Ocean's Muscles. It's no, because now there's a female Ocean's series. You know. I would be more excited about that if they hadn't done two, three sequels to the original Oceans movie. By uh, now. Well, the Oceans, Oceans 11 that came out uh, was a remake of an older movie from the 60s. What are the originals? Because uh, it's like, it's Oceans 7. There's Oceans 11, then there's Oceans 12. And 13. And 13. Uh, and then 13 is the I think female now cast, yes. Eight. No, I think it's like Ocean's 8. I don't know. Is now the female cast. I don't know. It's like Sandra Bullock. It's new. It's coming out. 
Anyway, I mean, long story good, short, but... Black Panther is a Marvel movie in which uh, we have a uh, black uh, character who has good morals, uh, strong ethics, and good leading personality. I, I agree. Like I, I don't see like your big downside to this, Sean, because I really liked it. There like, we go. I, am I saying people like you should put it on a pedestal? No, but am I say, saying it's one of the best Marvel movies I've seen in a long time? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, that's my argument for it. So. I really enjoyed this movie. I'm glad you did. I really enjoyed... I'm very glad uh, you did. Anybody who enjoys this, I'm glad you enjoy it. And... We even got back to the future joke, though. Come on. That was really sweet. And sneakers. Yeah. It's so simple and so dumb, and I love it. what's the point of them? Because it's just a fun little joke to make. (laughs) That's really it. Um, (laughs) Actually, that was a legitimate concern, because if that lab uh, has little things that dust could get into. Uh, sandals are kind of a no-no in those scenarios. Eh. They use dust as a computer, like, generated thing. That's what that whole, like, the sand? Yeah. That's what their, like, imagery things was, which is so freaking cool when he picks it up. I kind of thought that was uh, Therafluid. No. I mean, it might have been, but the way that they had it texturized and stuff, it was supposed to be like sand, and I think I remember them calling them something like that. I don't but know. But I might be. Either way, my take on it, I really liked it. I liked it as much as the first time I watched the first Avenger. Okay. Um, and I'm really going to abstain from saying whether it's overhyped or not because that's not my department, you know? Mm. It's like it will mean something different to someone else, whatever their background, economically, sociologically, or whatever is. For me, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the pride and dignity of the character and how he carried it out. I enjoyed the people that were in with him. The war rhinoceros was a neat thing to reference to but overall in the fight it was kind of weird but i ran you know you, you run with it it's kind of like you uh, suspension of disbelief what about the shield like the, the shield cape. was awesome the cape shield thing yes they said oh shields up i'm like the fuck Whoa. <gasps> but yeah no it was Everyone. a fun fun movie to watch Everyone keeps wondering if the thing with Captain America that they've shown in the Infinity War trailer so far is not completed. Like how when we saw all the stuff with Thor, we didn't see him missing the eye. But with, uh, you know, we might get a certain shield that shows up later on. Oh, they're going to give him the 90s laser shield? Maybe. Wait, 90s laser shield? Yeah, in the 90s, Cap lost his shield for a little bit. He and, had it uh, in... I thought he had it in the new... Uh, the Ultimate... No, his kid had it in the Ultimates. Like I the didn't third, read the Ultimates. No, like the third that. Ultimate Avengers movie that was oh, the no, kid. I didn't, I didn't so I'm, I'm going to confess something as a nerd here. I literally did not know about Cap's kid or the laser shield. Or that both of them were together until well, two days a, ago. That was a what if thing. I mean, so. maybe it was, but the point is, I didn't know about it until two days ago. I was on Pinterest looking at nerd stuff because I want to add to that little board I have. And fuck you for anyone who talks down to Pinterest. It's You're fun. The only man on the face of the planet that uses Pinterest. That is a lie. Anyway, there was a thing, and it was like the new Avengers, and it was Cap's kid with the laser shield, and it had uh, Thor and. Uh, what's the other warrior girl? Lady name? Sif. Thank you. Yeah. I couldn't remember. I kept wanting to say Seraph. Um, but it had her kid in there, and there's a few others. I just glanced at it and then kind of went on my way. It just stuck out to me. It's uh, like Hawkeye, uh, Ant Man and Wasp kid. It, it's a series, or it's a it's a what if like movie. Yeah. Where like Ultron is basically taking over the planet, and it's called like Avengers Next. And then, like, Thor just dropped his daughter from Asgard, or she decided to come down against his wishes, and, like, they go through the whole thing, like, they've lived in, like, this secret compound with Iron Man, and, like, the Hulk's been in the fucking mountains, so for all the years, it's not terrible. It's not, uh, get that a look, though. Yeah, it's like a a one-and-a-half cartoon movie. Uh, I think I have a cup, copy of it laying around somewhere I can give nice. it to Sean to give it to you. 
But final consensus, Black Panther, good movie. It it was it was perfectly fine. Good movie. Thumbs up. Perfectly do fine. Do it to the face with me. Come no, on. I'm only here like for two videos. <laughs> Get to the face thing with me. Come on. No. Come on. You already Please. have somebody else doing it with you. All right, cool. I'm doing it. <laughs> it's nice to have somebody here that's on my side, and you kind of just put everything down. I'm sorry, I have a differing opinion. Excuse me for thinking outside the box. No, you know what? Fuck it. It's fine. Black Panther is the best movie on the face of the planet. It, it, it so shut the Oscars down. It wins all of them. Best picture, <laughs> best costume design, best sound. Actually, that's uh, you know what? It's been an entirely new category, exclusively for it. Uh, best Black Panther movie goes to Black Panther. I have an interesting question for you. Now that you mentioned that, what Oscar nomination do you think it will get? Probably none. Really? Not even one. Probably not. Musical score, costumes. Uh, Lead, uh, I lead doubt actor, it. supporting uh, first actress. Of all, first of all, it's way too early to start speculating about next year's Oscars. I mean, maybe, but so, it's like for the fun of it. Which one do you think it would get? If I were going to go with anything, I would probably say costume design. Those were some pretty badass costumes. They were, they were good costumes. I, really I, I love that's, Killmonger. That's something thing. I will give the movie. That, his looked really, really cool, actually. He looked uh, like a paramilitary mercenary. Uh, I was, he was talking about the Black Panther costume. And, but yeah. Yes, that looked cool, too. I like the king's costume, like the king's version of the Black Panther costume with the garb yeah. over it that was there for like that 15 seconds. Slick. Yeah. I'm only sorry that James Earl Jones couldn't like be a part of this film. That's who would have done a better job than Forrest Whitaker. I was racking saying, my brains trying to think. Are you saying else? someone could have done a better job than Forrest Whitaker? Well, it would have been nice not to see Forrest Whitaker stumbling around with his lazy eye going, Don't let the dream die! Again. That was Rogue One. Was it? I couldn't tell. Because so, he basically does the same thing in this. Speaking <laughs> of, uh, well, Lazy Eye, maybe not. I believe that the gentleman who played the king had a glass eye. I don't know, but it was really distracting in the close-ups. It was a little distracting. I mean, I assume it's something you can't help with. No, no. But it, uh, I was it's, curious it's the same if that was you just have with, like, Peter Falk in close-ups. You look at him and you're like, Falk. Why can I not remember that? Columbo? Thank you. Jesus, man. What are you it saying? The old while. king or... The yeah. old king that had died okay. in the previous movie, um, I think the actor has a glass eye, or the character, I'm not sure which. It's just, I didn't know if that was just me that was like looking at it. From no, he, 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 looked like, he looked like an iguana looking in two directions. That's harsh. It is, but that's what it looked like. I'm sorry. But <laughs> it really did. Wow. Mm. I kept flashing back to Lucy, Daughter of the Devil, I was like... I, I don't know which I... I do I hope, look at the lazy one or the regular one or I, do, in between? I really hope that you're editing this part out for he, your own sake. It's him. So Are you going to edit this part out or are you going to throw him to the wolves? Uh, I kind of just let him... Oh, get no. My wolves. ass was thrown to the wolves when I said that this wasn't the greatest movie ever created. Dude, I, I mean, the I internet tore wait. him a new asshole about Justice League when he called Steppenwolf half-ass dark as I... I, I cannot me. wait for are the... the Flood of comments that insist I'm a racist sex shit. Well, because I found have fault. To walk me through this one here. What happened with Steppenwolf? We'll ex we'll talk about that later. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. For now, though, I think that's about everybody's thoughts. So we'll see you next time, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye.